come up. Uh, okay. Recorded. All right. So, Go. oh, okay. We're live and open. It's now broadcasting. Yay. Yes. Yay. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So, um, I, I'll just give a very, very short introduction to myself because I just um, gave a longer one while we were waiting for, for it to start. So I'm Michelle Dixon, and thank you everyone who's here. It's great to have you here. Thank you for your patience while we've um, negotiated our technical challenges. Challenges always make us stronger. So um, we are now live and really strong and excited and ready to go. So I am a body therapist and a trauma release specialist, specialist and I work on the intersection of emotional healing and coaching. So helping people release trauma from their body, from their memories, and then also create the life, you know, create a life that lights them up, as I like to say. And you can imagine in the work I do, um, which I've been doing for a decade now, and I'm, I'm based in Sydney, Australia, but I have clients by Zoom from all over the world. You can imagine in the work I do, I get a lot of people who come to me for emotional healing from narcissistic abuse, very often. But I don't work at the level of you know, helping my clients negotiate boundaries and communication and that sort of thing. I really say in my corner, my expertise, which is emotional healing, that release, that changing your script, changing your paradigms and the coaching aspect of it. But I've noticed, especially over the past year, that I've got lots of questions from my audience about how to, how to deal with things um, with um, their abusers, with the fallout from the abuse, you know, from their community and so on. And so I sat with it for a while and I was like, I can't really answer these questions, but I'm sure there must be some, you know, there must be an expert who, who can. And I, I had this idea that I would um, approach, I thought in my mind, I'll just find one expert who can fill in the gaps of what I know and we can do a webinar together and they can answer the questions. Have, what a fantastic idea. Of course, um, the universe has much bigger plans than I expected because when I approached um, Paxton, our moderator here from Rhythm Entertainment, um, the Insta account, um, Narc Abuse TV, and I said, hey, I'd like to, to do this. He was like, oh, I've got, you know, multiple people. So here we are. This is how this has happened. Um, we have all come together for this, for this purpose. So really, you'll find that I'm not going to do as much talking as our wonderful guests here, because this is really to give them a chance to answer the questions that you all have. And um, and our intention is to give you support and insight and inspiration so that you walk away from this feeling like you knew more than before, you're more hopeful, you have some resources, and um, we won't be going into some of the legal questions because that's not our area and that's a really a personal thing. So I will just say that if you have any questions that haven't been answered and specific issues, feel free to send a message to Narcotics TV the Instagram account so that we can collectively funnel you to someone who'll be able to help you. So that's why we're here, that's who I am. And now I'd like to turn the mic over to the panelists to have them quickly introduce themselves before we get started answering your questions. And please know at any point you can submit more questions, um, you can message us with more questions. But I'm gonna start with Trisha um, and, then, um, and then we'll move on. So Trisha, if you wanna just give us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're super glad you're here. Um, I'm Trisha. I am a survivor of a abusive narcissist for seven years. Um, I am also a coach and I am an author. I wrote a book and released that this past August 2021 um, about my abuse. And it's a really great roadmap giving you tips on red flags and behaviors and understanding what's taking place, um, as well as a deep dive into my healing journey and how I got out for good, went no contact and how amazing my life is without him. So um, I'm here to encourage you and answer questions on how you can get started. Um, in my coaching, I really work with helping people set boundaries and finding self-love and your true self, connecting to your spirit and um, yeah, so anybody that's feeling stuck or alone, just know you're not, and you're not crazy, and we love and support you, and we're here for you, so keep playing. <laughs> Thank you, Trisha. I'll go on to Eve now. 
Hi everybody, uh, my name's Eve Bradley and I am an abuse recovery mentor. So I specialise in working with people to break trauma bonds and to reclaim your identity. So I'm really focused on developing a healing pathway that is absolutely right for the individual and the individual's experiences. So like Trisha, we incorporate boundaries, communication, um, co-parenting or parallel parenting. And yeah, really coming back to ourselves, connecting with the divine feminine and masculine energies to promote a lot more balance in life. So that is what I do. I also um, bring people together in a survivor's network and bring people together to talk and to share. And because the shared compassion that we find in this community of survivors, once you tap into it, that is the absolute lifeblood to get you through this, this process. Oh, fantastic. Thank you so much, Eve. Uh, Sarah. Hello. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm Sarah De Silva. I am a life coach. Uh, I have been a coach for about five years, but only went into the sphere of narcissism um, about two and a half years ago. Um, I was narcissistically abused by my parent, um, but that also went into um, personal relationships, which caused a lot of strife. <laughs> but then I found my way um, and I, now I'm, I'm helping people through my pages, my personal um, social pages. Uh, but the main one is Heal the Mum Wound on Instagram. Um, I have a coaching program in which I help people to gain back their identity, um, figure out what it is that they really want and uh, create the life that they want. Um, but, you know, there's a bit of a process that comes with it. Um, with the, the realization that we've come through a bit of a journey and a bit of a traumatic experience. So um, I help with that, not only that, but um, also with the other side of figuring out what you really want, because sometimes when we go through that whole process of um, healing the trauma, we don't really know who we are or what we want. So that's the big part of it. Um, and yeah, I guess that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Thank you, Sarah. And Anushka. Hi, everyone. So I am a psychologist practitioner, and I think a lot of people know me from YouTube. I started making videos all about educating people on um, narcissistic abuse, and that obviously has grown over time. So I work with people to self-generate. So this is a lot of you who have gone through narcissistic abuse, but are like on the other side now. And it's kind of like, what do you do? We've gone through this, we know what narcissism is, but I help people to empower themselves to get past this abuse and learn how to connect to ourselves and grow from that. Great, thank you so much. Um, so excited to have all these women with, with me today. Um, it's just listening to it, you know, it's, it's um, it's really inspiring actually everyone's personal journey and I'm sure we'll learn more about that as we go on. Just a quick note um, to emphasize that you know she probably got from Sarah who mentioned her parents so narcissistic abuse that can affect any kind of relationship and that was actually one of the questions is it just about a love relationship absolutely not we're here to talk about any any form coming from any direction friends family you know anything and um I think with that, we're just going to get started because we do have a lot of questions and I'm excited to hear, um, to hear, to hear the responses and to have the conversation. So I'm going to begin and we'll do it in the same order. So I'm going to, be, I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with a, a slightly more general question that I've got. And obviously I'm, I'm reading some of the questions, but you know, those of you who submitted them, these they, are completely they, anonymous, obviously. May I ask a um, favor before we start, my friend? Um, I'm going to ask, there are two individuals here that we are happy to be here, but we don't know their name, but they're under the name of Michelle Dixon and Sarah De Silva. Right, but, yeah. um, those are actually our panelists' names. Um, we just need a favor. We need you, before we end up having uh, to, to remove you from the show, we don't want to do that. We want you to let us know who you are and rename yourself so we can uh, know who you are because if not, we'll be confused. Um, we won't remove you. That's not what we're trying to do. We're trying to, we just need you to rename yourself uh, because 
we already have a Sarah and we already have a Michelle. So, so we want to make sure to have you rename yourself just to make yourself or move yourself to being an attendee instead of a panelist um, because that uh, will create a problem. We'll end up having two Michelles. Uh, so just give that some thought. Uh, if not, we'll have to do something back here on our technical end, but we just want to make sure that our panelists are the only ones uh, with those particular names. So there's no confusion for the rest of the audience uh, when we uh, say Michelle or if we're talking to Sarah. Um, a beautiful you, um, in introduction. Any, any other thoughts? Anybody else? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And some, someone, Eric, asked how, he, how did he change his name? I mean, if you go to your moving video, you'll see when you hover over it, there's a little, three little dots in blue. And if you click on the little dots, it will give you the option to rename yourself. So if you see those so, little three hamburger dots at the top, uh, just go ahead and do as Michelle Dixon, number one, I want to say, I want to say, where is Michelle number one, talking to Michelle number two. And, okay. So um, uh, thank you for, for working with us on this uh, to rename yourself. Uh, if you go to do just as Michelle highlighted and the same yeah. thing for the Sarah De Silva, you both have your cameras off. Um, we need to make sure we, we clarify that you're, you're going to go ahead and do that. Oh, thank you, Eric. You're the bomb. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can. Let me see. And maybe that the other Sarah De Silva doesn't know that that's. Um, We're working that on that's it. That's what her name, her screen name is. <laughs> we, got, we, got camp, we got a campground over here of people who are trying to, to see if they can do it for them. But uh, hey, thank you so much. I truly appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, All yours, Michelle. Uh, yeah, and just if you if you want more support with that, just type in the chat and then yeah. someone can help. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to start with this general question because I think it represents what so many, so many people are dealing with. So here's the question. Hi, how do you recommend dealing with a situation where a family member who is narcissistic, manipulative, and has a personality disorder tries to turn on others, tries to turn others, even relatives, against you? They don't actually tell you they've spoken to them, but you can tell by their changed behavior towards you. Do you share your experience with the family members? But then it can escalate and bring trauma back into your life, it can re-traumatize you. The gossip mill takes off and you just want to move into a more positive phase of your life. You feel like you're somehow playing into their hands. Also, what if you're, uh, and I'll, I'll leave that question with that. There's a second part to it, but we'll leave it with that. Um, I'm sure all of our panelists are, panelists are very familiar. We'll start with Trisha, if you don't mind. What, how would you, where do you even begin? Right. So actually I have firsthand experience with this. Um, what I had to do and what I highly suggest is again, to make those boundaries clear with your family members or whoever this person is speaking to out of turn behind your back. Um, I wouldn't get into a debate with them. Um, I know it's really hard to check your ego and not want to defend yourself, but that is giving the narcissist supply, whether positive or negative, just don't even go there. Just state with whoever you're speaking with, like how you feel. It makes you uncomfortable. These are your boundaries. I don't want them in my life right now, and I'm not going to explain it. This is just how it needs to be because you've got to protect your peace. That's what I had to do with my sister. And it's still very challenging. Um, I have a lot of pushback from some family members that keep telling me I need to forgive. I have forgiven for myself, not for her. So just do what you need to do to protect your inner peace because blood is not thicker than peace. And you don't need to get into explanation with anybody about it. Just, it is what it is. That's it. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to absolutely agree with Tricia. You know, developing boundaries is a difficult thing to do at first. But once you get into the flow of it, once you start to learn your own personal boundaries yourself and kind of test them yourself and know when you're going to uphold that boundary, how that looks for you, how it feels for you, it becomes a lot easier it becomes a lot more comfortable and actually over time it becomes really very empowering um when it comes to family like Trisha says you know it's about having that kind of 
quiet and um you know like really um you know not engaging and you know being polite keeping the body language closed not inviting in conversation you know these are really practical kind of ways to you know be polite be respectful but not engage not to give that supply over and therefore not to kind of re- feel the fallout coming back at you and and, and that can save you from re-traumatizing and also carrying on with your own inner work you know continuing your healing so that you are building your emotional resilience you are you're increasing your toolkit of of things that you can do to reground yourself after you've been put through one of these one of these kinds of events so yeah thank you Sarah do you have anything to add Um, Yeah, so um, the first time I spoke to Paxton, he actually gave me something really cool, which is FBI. I'm pretty sure anyone who's watched um, the the, um, IGTV that I did with him knows about it. But um, I like to use the F for fearlessness, B for boundaries, and I for interdependence. So F, we have to have enough fearlessness to not care about what people are saying behind our backs and enough fearlessness to stand up to them if they're going to um, start crap and enough fearlessness to walk away and absolutely not engage when it happens. Then have the boundaries to go, you know what, this is what I am willing to accept and this is what I'm not willing to accept and this is what I will take and what I won't take. And then interdependence comes in where we go, you know what, this is how much your opinion really matters to me And this is how much I'm going to take on board your opinion, but I'm also going to care about my own while also, you know, I'm not going to become codependent on your opinion or dependent on your opinion. I'm not going to become too independent where I'm pushing myself away from you, but I'm also going to be like, you know what, I know myself and I also know you. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Fantastic. I love that. Yes, I agree. All, all, all three of you have answered that perfectly. All I, I've got nothing more to add, but all I would say is um, it's really difficult, you know, especially with like family members, because they are your kind of your primary relationships and they're the ones that hurt the most. But you see, we can't change somebody else's thoughts or behavior towards us what we can change is how we react to it so it's just as um, Eve Sarah and Trisha have said you know you have to not care about and it is really difficult because it is like I said they're primary relationships and they do hurt Um, but you have to think about your own health your mental well-being like at what cost does that really matter what they're saying? So you have to protect yourselves. Remember, we can't change what somebody else says or does, but we can we can change or we can protect ourselves from somebody like that. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to I say too, to you know, just, just honestly, honestly like, like it, it's, it's empowering, empowering to work, to work on, on yourself and to keep that distance. distance. Um, but yeah, yeah like, like I know she was saying. What's happening with your audio? Is anyone up here in the audio? Yeah. Be correct mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Is this better? Yeah. Better. I think it's because I moved to MLSP. Still bad. Still bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah correctly. Yeah. Oh, no. How about now? Mm-hmm. A little it's bit. It's a bit like a robot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how about now is it any better no i try muting and then come back on and yeah I try muting and then coming back yeah how about now <laughs> it's Anything? better but it's still got that crackle that's weird i might have to change head my headpiece oh it's getting better really yeah, yeah. super weird okay yeah maybe maybe um yeah, maybe you don't need the headset. Yeah, I'll switch it out. Carry on. Yeah, now, um, yeah, it actually did sound better, but I thought um, I would just add to this question. This question that, that everyone responded to actually had two parts, and I left the second part because I wanted to hear about that, that personal piece when we're talking about family. But this, 
this individual added to this question something which I think is a really interesting co complexity. Also, in addition to this stuff with the family and the gossip, what if you're too scared to start an online business with the fear your sister is going to anonymously leave bad reviews and try to destroy anything you try to build? Um, and this person mentions a sister, you know, was trained as a lawyer and can outwit everyone. I think this is a really interesting point because this goes beyond, you know, merely your family dynamics. And now we're moving into how, how this can affect you out there in the world. So I'd love to hear, you know, I mean, I can imagine, you know, as a business owner myself, that, that kind of fear. And I'm wondering um, if we could, if we could address that, what if, what if that's the thing that's, causing so much internal fear. Do you want to try speaking first, Trisha, and see how you go with the correctly? You're muted, though. <laughs> but we can hear you. Yay. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. No problem. Um, yeah, I would just wanted to add on to what Anusha yeah. said, and your response is your responsibility, and you're not responsible for other people's feelings or what they think, because you know what's happened you know who you are more than anybody else on earth so you don't even need to get into a debate with anybody just state what is what that was it <laughs> and with the online business question that is yeah a very real fear that could really impact and i think for me I would definitely be engaging in lots of positivity to ensure that I was attracting in as much positivity. Put your energy into your business, get all of the good reviews and they will drown out. Even if she does do that, which we can't ever know that she definitely would, but let's say she does. If she is just 1% of 100 reviews, then she isn't gonna make anywhere near the impact that she thinks she is because we know as business owners, there's always people out there that are not going to, you know, they, they, they're going to project their problems into your business, into your life. And we just have to have that resilience and that sense of identity that they're not going to get in. Yeah. Sarah? Ladies, yeah, you're, I can... you're doing so well. Absolutely well, ladies. I'm going to interject myself into this conversation momentarily because there's a number of things happening in the chat and there's the Q&A section. Uh, so as a gentle reminder to everyone that's an attendee here, uh, all 18 of you, uh, feel free to uh, make sure that you use that Q&A section. So if you have a question, this is interactive. Feel free to uh, type in a question and the panelists can see the question. Panelists, feel free to look at the Q&A Q &A section and, mm -hmm. and bring it up. Uh, feel free to interject them at any point that you want to bring up one of those questions along with the, of course, questions that we already have designated and sent into us. Um, but as of right now, everyone's enjoying uh, the show and the chat also is quite busy. Uh, feel free to uh, notice anything that appeals to you there. Thank you, Michelle. Yep, all good. Yeah, um, yeah so when I first started my business, I was feeling the exact same way. Um, and especially starting a business in uh, narcissism. Well, I was doing coaching before and everyone knew my business. Um, I was working in self-love, but then I started my business in um, healing the mum wound and I wanted it to be completely private because I was like, if people I know come along and have a look at what I'm doing, they might have something to say about it. Now I do come across people who have something to say about it all the time. And it actually has taught me personally how to become more fearless in the mm -hmm. face of these situations, actually how to deal with conflict and how to feel better about it. So in a way, it was actually a positive um, experience. And just like Eve said, that there are always going to be bad reviews. Um, if that person is willing to go ahead and take all of like time out of their day to do that to your business that you're trying to grow from the ground up, it says a lot more about them and about you, it says a lot more about what time they have on their hands and about how, how much joy and purpose they have in their lives. So focus on what makes you happy and focus on what you want. That's what's most important. 
And I, you know, I think that people can pick up on um, reviews that are left with malice. I was in the hospitality industry for a long time. And so, you know, TripAdvisor reviews were my nemesis for a while. But actually, you can tell when they're written with malice or if they've got genuine. And, you know, people reading them, they, they can, they've got their own kind of sense of filters and what have you to work it out. So it, it's a fear, but not one that should stop you from, from going for your dreams. Definitely not. Yeah, nothing hurts them worse than seeing you happy and succeeding. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah. Definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. Anyone, if anyone has any more comments, just hop on. I might move to the next question then in that case. Um, I'll just, um, I do, I do see we have a question. Let's see. Um, okay, yes. Cool. We, we had a question in the Q&A, which Trisha answered. Awesome. Um, I'm going to get onto this question, which um, I know because I believe this person might even be on the call. So this is a question about um, elder abuse. So I'll read it out loud. Hi, any advice regarding a highly manipulative and controlling sibling undertaking elder abuse and succeeding in destroying relationships between the parents and three other siblings? She lives with them. I think she lives with the parents, um, along with her primary school age children and hasn't worked for over 10 years. She's on disability and says she has PTSD, but my counselor says she sounds narcissistic, someone with a personality disorder. She's very angry and bitter about how her life has turned out. She likes having my parents run the she likes having my parents run the house, and she doesn't like housework and has a sense of entitlement. Okay, so I think you get the gist of this question. Hmm. Concerns about relation. It's a little bit like the other one, but I did want to speak to this because I believe this person might be watching. So yeah, and um, anything to add to? It's probably all related. But Trisha, anything specific to say about that one? Um, again, very similar. Um, to what I said earlier and my situation um, completely. Are you, are you talking about my sister actually? <laughs> um, uh, it's very difficult. It's really painful. But again, you have to um, stand up for yourself. And I would say, honestly, um, in a loving, compassionate way, um, offer support to your parents who are having to deal with it. Um, it's nice that you have some separation because you're not under the roof with them. Um, but, you know, there's a difference between being compassionate and en enabling somebody to continue. Um, so, you know, I would encourage uh, your parents to set some boundaries and, um, you know, maybe have like a little come to Jesus where they say, in this many months, you need to get your own place or find alternate you know, arrangements, because it is very exhausting um, and unhealthy for everybody's mental, emotional health. And um, yeah, I would just yeah, say those conversations, they can be so hard, can't they? But after they're done, yeah. after you've got through them, the benefits can be well worth the initial pain without a doubt and yeah those conversations they can be really really difficult but yeah. if you can be clear with them clear with what your objective is before you're going into the conversation so if you're clear with what what you're working towards often your your brain will naturally take you in the right in the right way to do it and actually doing them gradually often we find that we need to sit down and have great big heart to heart and they have to be be really loads of points but actually we will respond much better to dealing with one thing at a time and mm -hmm. seeing it as a long game and you know working through some of those concerns gradually and then before you know it you've all got better boundaries you're all working together better and she's not getting as much out of the situation but keep educating yourself about narcissistic narcissistic abuse because then you can spot the tactics you can almost but you can begin to preempt them you know what's coming next and that mm -hmm. can make that takes the sting out of so much yeah i yeah. wonder if the parents in this situation also experience that they're being abused the elder you know the elderly parents 
Okay, Quarantine. so Camilla's just popped in the um, chat box. Right. My parents just yeah. want peace. They won't kick her out because she oh, okay. has a son. They don't exactly. appreciate when I turn a mirror to them about what's going on. My mum has become an abuser against me under my sister's influence. So it sounds like the mum's mm -hmm. taken on an enabling role in that dynamic. And that can be very difficult. I'll pass over to Sarah. Do you want to... I was just going to say I can add to that for the um, the enabling part um, because I'm in a person I'm personally in a si similar kind of situation. My mother is the one who's um, the abuser per se, and my sisters are two. My younger sisters have a disability and they live with my mother, and I want access to my sisters, um, but my mother isn't allowing it. So the only access that I do have is via FaceTime. So I'm allowed to talk to them via FaceTime. And when we were talking, when you were reading out the question, a few alarm bells um, rang for me. It was like, you're trying to do something for people that um, still kind of have their own free will and choice in this situation, mm -hmm. but at the same time are being manipulated by someone else. And it's really tough because you're trying to help them to see that they're the ones being hurt right now but they can't see it so then they do the enabling like my sister for example says oh you really need to say sorry to mom because you know blah 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 but I can't really explain that to her because she doesn't understand what narcissism is or anything like that so what I've learned to do over time is to do what I can because there's literally nothing else I can do I've tried everything but all I can do is to put my boundaries in place and set my expectations so my expectations at the first time in the first instance was I'm going to get what I want in this situation. But then I realized I'm not going to <laughs> because this person is going to hold their position very, very strong and they're not going to. They're going to do everything possible to not allow me to get what I want because they know that's what I want. So when you set your expectations that you're not going to get what you want in this situation, it actually removes a lot of disappointment. It makes you go, OK, well, I don't have much power here. And then you decide to do what you can when you put your boundaries in place and you go, well, this is the relationship I can have with them and I'm going to find happiness and peace with that and I'm not going to push anymore with the other thing because that's what's making me unhappy. I just want to add to that. Camilla has written, I feel sad. I want grandparents for my own son, but my psychologist has told me to walk away. Camilla, I just want to say that I know that you're in a, it's like what Sarah has been saying, like you're in this position and you do, it's kind of like you don't, you, don't, you don't want to be in it. And I know that you want to have grandparents for your son, but I think what the psychologist is saying here is right. Um, I know you don't want to, but walking away will give you that space and that time to heal. I would say reach out to these lovely ladies, you know, to help you um, kind of develop boundaries and heal from this because what you have gone through is, um, do you know what, it's life altering because I guess you grow up um, and we're always led to believe that our parents are so wonderful and they're there for us, but it's not always the case. And we have to recognize that we have to stand up for ourselves. And that's why these lovely ladies, um, Eve, Trish and Sarah, they deal with and working with boundaries. So I would reach out to them as well, but walking away, will help you to give you space and time to recalibrate and just think about this. And do you know what, Camilla? It doesn't mean that this has got to be like this forever. Ever. It's just for this, for the time being, but you need to get strong in order to deal with, you know, with, with your uh, parents and your son also teach him these techniques too. Putting space between you in these situations can be really, really powerful. And, and like Anushka says, you know, it doesn't have to be forever. The decisions we make now, they don't apply to the rest of our lives. You know, taking six, 12 months, even two years to kind of step back, to really focus on yourself and then come back at this situation with, from a new angle. Things have changed. The dynamics moved on, you know, and you might find that the results that you get are much more in line with with what you want for your and your son's future. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm loving all these responses because it's so in alignment with with how I work also with with emotional healing, which is this idea of walking away. It's just also 
also part of that walking away is is giving yourself some time to to kind of raise your energy and increase your positivity mm-hmm. and increase your self love and raise your vibration if that's your language and and it's so important because what I see again and again is it's this idea that I think it's the Einstein quote that you know we never solve problems at the same level at which we created them you know. Mm-hmm. And the idea is that is that the space you're in when there's when there's strife and struggle is is not the same space that you're going to be in, and it's not going to have the same outcome when you're in a place of self-loving and you know, and you're more even. And I think this is a great takeaway for everyone. And I think um, it's something that I'll mention again, kind of as we go throughout this discussion. But this idea that it's, it's so important to find ways to nurture yourself and increase your positivity because. The flow on effect from that is so massive, even in these relationships, which you can't control, you can't control all relationships, but just by holding a different energy and vibe within yourself and radiating that positivity, you'll start to see that reflected back to you in your life. So that's so important. Um, I love that message, everyone. Definitely. That's Definitely. so true. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to move on to a relationship question because this is one that I get so often, so often. I would love for you to give your followers advice about how to stay sane and healthy while going through a divorce with a narcissist, okay, and you have children you share. Um, In this particular situation, um, the narcissist is charging the healthy parent with parental alienation. I'm not sure I understand that, but I think we all understand the the concept that, that the tables have been turned, right? They're trying to separate, um, and the narcissist is, is, is claiming that the, the same person is the abuser and the difficult parent. Um, and the question gets very specific, but um, you know, there are the other people in, involved in this, you know, in a range of capacities from legal to relationships, which are making this separation completely different. I realize it's difficult, but I realize this is a huge question and there's so many different angles, but I'd love to, to get stuck into it a little bit because how, how, how is that? How do we, like, how do you navigate that um, when, you know, you're, go- you're not just going through the separation, but then you're faced with this possibility. And I, I have friends as well who've gone through this where then your child is spending part of their time with a narcissist and, you know, and they have to learn how to negotiate that. This is, um, and, and feel free to speak to any part of that that really speaks to you, because I think, I mean, we could probably do a whole, a yeah, whole we <laughs> webinar just on dealing with a co-parent who's a narcissist, but let's just talk about, yeah, how do you deal with the divorce part of that, Trisha? Um, I would just like to say, honestly, you have to um, understand their DARVO technique that they're doing, mm-hmm. um, which is deny, avoid, um, what is it? Did I avoid reverse victim and offender? And that's what they do all the time is flip it around on you so that they don't have to take accountability and they can play, oh, poor pitiful me. Um, you have got to protect yourself. And I know it hurts. I know it's hard, especially with children involved. Um, continue being consistent as that child's safety, their rock, their confidant, and go bury your head in a pillow and cry and scream in a closet if you have to, but continue being that child's rock because children are smart and they will figure it out Mm -hmm. um, eventually. So do what you need to do. Lots of self-care, deep breaths, um, meditate. I can't say enough about meditation. Get outside, connect to the earth. Um, put your bare feet on the ground and just make sure that you are, um, you know, taking good care of you and that, that child. Um, Cause it will turn, it'll, it'll eventually flip. And I know it's hard. Um, another group you can look into is coercive control on Instagram. Um, I'm actually involved with them and writing all my state legislators to change the laws of what's deemed domestic abuse. Um, because of this very reason and how messed up the uh, judicial system is on allowing these people to get um, 50-50 custody and Mm -hmm. harming our children. So um, sending you lots of love. I hope that helps. Um, But just maintain who you are. Keep being you and that child will figure it out. 
That's absolutely can right. I, it, it, sorry, sorry it's it's right, Eve, can I can I just quickly say um, there's a question that's come through on the Q and A. If I could just get the panelists to open that, just to maybe refer to that as you're answering, because it's a it's a specific scenario. So go ahead. Oh yeah, so I was just going to say absolutely what Tricia says about you know really developing your relationship with your child, being consistent, being clear, giving them a safe space to be able to talk through their experiences. With my own children, well, my old, my oldest daughter's seven, so uh, my youngest is one, so I don't have conversations with her. Well, I do, but she doesn't really respond. Um, but yeah, my elder daughter, we talk about these kinds of behaviours, but not in relation to people that she knows. So we're picking up on it on the television, we're picking up on it on storybooks, we're talking about bound we're talking about respect all the time but we're not relating it to people that she knows and she connects the dots you know she can pick out these behaviors in people that she does spend time with and then she she she's starting to relearn her own resilience her own boundaries we're practicing about that definitely um, learn about how narcissists approach the legal system. There are lots of really brilliant books and resources out there with regards to going through the court system with a narcissist because it's like a chess game. You get a couple of couple of um, moves ahead and everything, like I said a, a bit earlier, the sting gets taken out of it. You actually begin to um, be quite empowered in your understanding that they are that predictable get some legal representation that really understands this as well you know trying to educate a um, a legal representative or an official isn't possible so working with with people that already know what this kind of personality is like and what they're likely to experience is another way to kind of arm yourself and and get get a better result out of this but my heart goes out to you because it is so difficult when our children are involved because there are there are babies and we want to protect them from the nasty things that go on in the world and it's very difficult when when that's their parent Um, yeah, so to add to that, I completely agree with Trisha and Eve on that, that your children are the ones who will pick up the, um, the behaviour. Personally, come, being a child of a narcissist, um, it took me a while to notice. Um, it, I didn't have anyone else going, you know, what, your mum's a narcissist. And, but I picked up that something wasn't quite right in their behaviour. I was like, this just doesn't seem right. No one else acts like this. Like this is just why don't they? Why don't they hear me? Or why don't they like listen or have empathy? Like your child will eventually start going. There's something not quite right here, and then they'll start to learn. And like Eve said, if you're if you're picking up on the behavior and not directly directly relating it to that person, they will pick up that that behavior is directly related to that person themselves. They'll make the connection themselves. Um, and in the development stages of children, they will have a period of picking up everything that comes around them up until about the age of seven to 10. Then after that, they come to a stage where they're looking up to role models. So they will be trying to model behavior that they believe is really, really amazing. That, that's really like, um, you know, like a superhero. So if you remain um, exactly who you truly are, that's what I've noticed. If you if you don't give the narcissist what they want, they're, they're trying to get a reaction out of you with everything that they do. But if your child sees that you can re remain calm in those situations and you're not reacting, you're not getting um, abusive in return, you're not um, being emotionally immature, you're not playing games, you're just saying, this is my boundary, I'm holding it strong and I'm going to be a rock for my child at the same time then they're going to come back to you later on and be like, I saw what was going on the whole time. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I see um, Anushka's already, uh, for those of you, I, I'm hoping everyone can see the chat, but Anushka's actually put in the chat details of solicitors that are in the UK that deal with narcissistic abuse. I'm so excited to see that. That was one of the things I was hoping for. Some, some really tangible, wow. um, yeah, thank you so yeah, much for that. Um, I'll make sure that I post that um, as a comment when we have the recording done for those of you, yeah. Can, they, can, can I also add, sorry. No, that's all right, go on, Sarah, it's fine. 
can I also add that if anyone is um, looking for help around those situations, legal help, I, I personally had a lot of um, support from a forensic psychologist because they know a lot about the laws involved with family laws and things like that, but they're also a psychologist, so they can help with the therapy side of things. Yeah, no, that's really good advice, Sarah. Um, no, absolutely. And they also know with a forensic psychologist, they, these are individuals that have worked with um, enduring mental health, you know, like axis one disorders, people with personality disorders or schizophrenia, you know, they, they understand it as well. Um, so yeah, just wanted to add that just, just because the solicitors are in the UK, they do deal with clients worldwide. So they're just, you know, they're just because they're in the UK, they, they will take on cases from the US. So they're brilliant. Um, you know, I've recommended a lot of people um, to, to them and um, no one has come back complaining. So I've got actually a few clients that are actually using them at the moment. But just going to the Q&A question to the anonymous attendee. I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through this, but just like all three of the um, lovely panelists have said, you know, it is about um, protecting yourself. And the way that you do that is you've got to remove the emotional side of it now. And I know that is just so tough. And you've got to treat this situation like a business transaction. You know, it's it's it is a business. You're, you're basically in a business deal now. That's what that's what's going on here. And you and what this what this person is trying to do is provoke you and what you're going to do is you're going to respond you're not going to react you're going to respond and that's what you do that's how you get your power back so mm -hmm. you've got this I know it's not easy but you just have to you have to change your mindset in the way mm -hmm. that you you respond to this person he isn't or she he isn't that person anymore and they never were and so this is now trying to just get over that and just change your mindset and the way that you um, behave towards them and taking your time and and asking loads of questions but you know people that can can help you taking your time you know there's no emergencies involved in any sort of legal process you don't ever have to you know very quickly we can want to um react and you know get our message straight back or we, we want to instruct the next kind of stage of the legal but you know very much take your time be considered let it let it sit you know I, I'm always forever writing out things and then coming back to them and, and and coming back and back and back and then the right outcome comes in the end once the like you say the emotion comes out of it then because it becomes a very logical process mm -hmm. great I would suggest um, as well, all of you, you know, it, um, when you're finding that you're becoming really emotional and you're wanting to, to, to engage with this like a business transaction, as Anushka said, I think that's the perfect analogy mm -hmm. to go into that logical space. The question is, how can we, how can we in those moments marshal our own internal resources so that we're able to be grounded? So I would suggest that you find a, find a circumstance in which you feel particularly grounded. And that, I mean, usually that has to do with with nature, I mean, nature we know settles the nervous system, hugging the tree, being barefoot in the grass. Maybe for you it's a hot bath, but find that situation. Mm -hmm. and, and the next time you do it, really become aware, okay, this situation is really grounding me. Now, before you think that I'm suggesting that every time you get emotional, you run off and take a bath, like, you know, sorry, solicitor, I've got to go calm my nervous system. I'm not saying that. It's actually, it's actually a really helpful process whereby you really become aware when you're doing something that's settling your nervous system. You go like, oh, okay, I'm noticing that this standing on the beach, standing near a tree, doing this, take, it's calming my nervous system. And in that moment, give yourself like, a, it's, it's from neuro-linguistic programming, but it's very helpful. Give yourself a little tap or somewhere so that you can remember this feeling and ground it in your body. So let's just use the shoulder as an example. You're finding your happy place. You're like, okay, here I am. I'm really calm. This is, this is how I wish I felt when I was dealing with X or parent or whatever. Give yourself a little tap on the arm and imagine that feeling grounding in your body and give yourself the suggestion. We're our own best allies after all. Give yourself the suggestion. Okay, when I'm in this situation where I'm overwhelmed, this is going to remind me how it feels to have the bath done barefoot in the sun, you know, whatever, right? Breathe that in. Take some really deep breaths, breathing into your belly, feeling your diaphragm, feeling that feeling of settledness, really ground, tapping three times, and then just practice. The next time you feel yourself getting wound up, 
step back mentally for a moment, give yourself that tap and remind yourself. It, it, it sounds really um, so simple, too simple to work, but it can really work. And as with everything, the more you practice this, the better you become at it. Absolutely, um, without a doubt, it works. It really works. Yeah. Take it, yeah, take it from us, it works. So yeah. somebody's just popped in the chat. Um, it's hard to accept when a narc is a sibling or a family member who has gaslighted you always. And you're right, it's hard to accept narcissists even exist, let alone that they exist inside yeah. our family, that they exist inside our personal relationship circles. And they are, they do feel like sometimes they are everywhere. But one thing that I like to focus on is the fact that I'm very grateful that I'm not a narcissist and that so that I am in control of what I am. And it's about surrounding myself with people. You know, I'm very much about surround yourself with your soul tribe, integrate yourself into this community of survivors for as long as you need to, to really tap into this collective healing energy that we all have and we are all absolutely ready to share with, with you all. And yeah, find your soul tribe. And the more you can take from your soul tribe, the more you will be able to grow and heal. And then when you go back out there, when you come across these narcissistic people, they can't touch you. And that that's definitely what I subscribe to doing. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely. I just want to answer this question that we have um, from um, Anastasia or Anastasia, um, how to say, but she, she wrote this question in the chat, how, how to start going back out back into the other world after narc abuse. I see everything through this narc and non-narc lines, how to engage in relationships with people who've never faced narcissism. Is it possible? would we never be able to be normal again? I mean, this is such a great question, I'm sure. Mm. Uh, you, yeah, yeah. Trisha, do you want to start? Do you have any, how do you, I mean, you went through all of this, obviously you've written a book about it. A very um, good book, you, everybody. You have, yeah. go and read Trisha's book, it's really fantastic. It. You will, it will resonate with everybody without a doubt. Yeah. Can you, can you repeat it again? Because I was answering a chat. My yeah, apologies. no worries. It's it's actually from um it's in the chat. So it's basically how can we ever feel normal again? How can you go oh. back out into the world after narc yeah. abuse? Because you see everything in this black and white. They're abusers and victims. How do you engage in relationships with people who never faced narcissism? Is it possible sure. if people don't get you? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it is possible, and honestly, you just have to be patient and give yourself a lot of grace. Um taking that time to connect with yourself and to um, start journaling. I suggest journaling every single day, every morning, at least five or 10 minutes, just to get your thoughts out on paper. Mm -hmm. It's very cathartic. That's why I wrote a book. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, being, being able to take time for yourself, you know, and exercising your right to say no and, mm -hmm. um, you know, finding people that are like-minded that have been through something like this. Um, support groups are incredible. I was in one, I'm still in it because I love them. They're my family. Um, it's Narcissistic Apocalypse. Um, and Brandon is the host of that and he's precious. He's based out of Canada. Um, and we do a Zoom meeting twice a week and they're, they're great. That's what I was typing to whoever, but <laughs> um, you know, be very careful who you share with. Um, that's why it's important to join support groups. Um, you, you see that you're not on an island by yourself. You're not alone. It's sad that there's so many of us, but um, it's a very real and very pervasive thing all over the world. And it's, it's painful and it's evil, but I promise the more you pour into yourself and really focus on your healing, um, sleep when you need to, um, you know, dive into hobbies, something that you love or that you're interested in, um, making time for those things that intrigue you or you've always wanted to do and never got to, that will revamp your energy and your spark and you will start to branch out again and you'll find who you are, who you're meant to be and what direction you want to go. And everything will just kind of start settling down in the back and the further away you get from it, it's not so scary. Um, 
and life, I mean, life is a journey. We have lessons to learn. This is all a lesson. It's a painful lesson, but it, it makes you stronger and it helps you support others going through it. So just know that there is hope and that it does get better. Just have faith and patience and compassion for yourself. Absolutely. And keep, keep doing all of those things. And one thing that I get asked a lot is the question, how can I ever trust anybody again? And I always say the question is when you can trust yourself again. And by doing yes. all of those things that Trisha has just said, you know, really diverting your focus back onto yourself, onto what, you know, is authentic for you and really lights you up, like Michelle says, that's when you know that you've got these strong boundaries, you know who you are, you know what you're looking for in a person. And then it's not a question of whether you can trust other people, you trust yourself and you know that you will say no if it's not the right thing. And you'll pick up on it quicker too when Absolutely. people start to try to manipulate you or take advantage, you'll be like, ah, red flag. <laughs> knocked off. You're knocked yeah. off. It'll be beep, 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 ping. Yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. And to add to that, um, when you first come to the realization that you have been narcissistically abused, it is like you only see that um, for a very, very long time. You've got your narc abuse lenses on and you're like, oh, they're a narcissist, they're a narcissist, they're a narcissist, that's narcissistic, blah, blah, blah. And you're seeing it literally everywhere you look, just kind of like when you're trying to buy a new car and you see that car everywhere, you're just like, okay. And you start to get confused. I personally was confused. I was like, is this narcissism or is it not? And I was talking to my partner about it and he started to get a bit, you know, like he started to get bored by it because I was just like, this is all I'm talking about all day. Like, I can't believe it. This is just such a massive realization. And it was a huge part of my life for about six months. I was literally like everything in my life was narcissism. But that's because it was like waking up from a cult. It was like waking up <laughs> from being brainwashed. And it was like, oh my gosh, this is like golden information that has been missing from my life. So yes, it's very normal that you're going to have your narc abuse lenses on for a very long time until you start to settle. And what I like to call it, um, they call it, I've per I'm personally a cancer survivor and in the cancer survivor community, they call it a new normal. And I call it a new normal in this uh, situation as well, because it's not like you're going to um, go out in the world and be the same person you were ever again like you're going to be this new person who's much stronger who's actually got a superpower now who's able to see who is going to be manipulative or who's actually a genuine person so rather than see it like oh I can see all the narcissists now and it's really bad try and use a reframe which is a, an NLP technique which is flip it on on itself and say you know what I'm so glad that I can see the red flags everywhere now and I can see who's actually genuine and I take so much pleasure in meeting genuine good people that don't have any of those red flags you know it's really reassuring to know that they are out there and yeah they everyone comes into your life at the right time for you yeah 100 percent. and it's it's very very true that it's important yeah. to like I said, it's, it's one of the parts of my coaching process to focus on what you want, because that is the most important thing. When you start to change your life, you, you start to go, okay, well, what do I really want? And when you have a sense of purpose, it's like when your head is so, um, you know, in alignment or your head's down on looking at that purpose, nothing, if something, other things can come in, but they're not going to have a strong, um, strong enough pull to pull you away from that when you're focusing so dedicated, like, in a dedicated way towards what you want. Yeah. And the other thing too, I'd like to say is, you know, honor your feelings, those emotions, especially like you need to get those out. Um, don't stay in it, but honor that. And if you need to cry, cry, like your body needs to process it and get it out. And I mean, I'm sure Michelle could speak on that, but your body holds on to trauma in the cells. So you've got to work it out and allow yourself to purge it because it's not serving you holding on to that so yeah and to right also, Anishka, um, Anishka, did you want to add anything to that I just noticed your mute was off 
Oh, yes, thank you. I just wanted to say that the reason why we, um, after we've gone through um, narcissistic abuse and we are a lot more aware because we are a lot more kind of emotionally vulnerable. So when we have been traumatized, we, um, we're naturally drawn to that. And that's exactly what Sarah was saying. Yeah, we're, we're, we're drawn to it, we notice it. Um, but that's because our perceptions have changed. And, um, and uh, like um, Trisha was saying that, you know, the, the trauma is stored in our body. And I was thinking maybe Michelle, maybe you could kind of um, say to us or, or kind of um, advise us what we could do in terms of trying to get that trauma out of our body. Like, what would you do if somebody came to you and said, like, I've been narcissistically abused? <laughs> what do I do? Help me. Yeah, that's a great question. Well, I mean, getting trauma out of your body is, is absolutely, it's, it's so vital because essentially what it's doing is it's helping settle your nervous system. So if we're um, in an activated state, if we're in a traumatized state, we're, we're constantly in a flight or fight mode, or we can dissociate one or the other. But in any case, what that means is that you're, you're approaching your whole environment as if you're waiting for danger. And so either you're waiting for danger in a way that triggers you to be overreactive, over emotional, run, argue, fight, or in a way that causes you to retract back into yourself and dissociate and go numb. But in any case, the result is that your nervous system is unsettled and you need to settle it because the, the healing work, the coaching work, all of the things that all of these wonderful women do, they will be more effective and you'll be more receptive to them when you're not constantly in this vigilant state. So Settling the nervous system is important. How do you do that? How do you release trauma from the body? Well, it's a very individual and personal thing because we're all very different in terms of what we respond to, what works for us. Some people really respond to things like um, trauma release exercises, which is the uh, shaking modality, which helps you mm. literally just at the level of your body release that tension. Other people, um, are really, you know, really love to dance. They love that free dance, that free movement. And they go to some of these, uh, we haven't had a lot of them during lockdown, unfortunately, but some of these like Kundalini dance or freedom dance or um, five rhythms where you're just moving your body. That's phenomenal for just shaking it off. You can even do it at home. I advise clients put on music, music that's not gonna remind you of the past. It's just kind of neutral music and just let your body move with the music. And um, that can release it. You know, obviously crying and um, journaling, like Trisha said, is, is great because just sometimes getting the words out can trigger an emotional reaction. Um, also just becoming, and regardless of what modality you choose, becoming aware of how, how you're holding it, where it is in your body and really noticing when I speak to the ex, when I'm dealing with the legal stuff, where do I notice this okay. tension? Where in my body am I, am I holding it? And just go into that and, and imagine it dissolving around you. See if you can meet it in any way. There are multiple ways of doing it. Um, it's being in nature, as I've mentioned before, is a great way. But definitely, you know, starting on that journey to work with your body and to work with a, finding a way to um, discharge that energy and settle your nervous system is, is, is really, yeah, it's really important. It's really important. And I can give everyone more resources um, as we go on. I have a little pro program that's a $37 program called releasing, um, you know, basically um, releasing trauma from the body. And it's, it's an online program that just is just focused on that. It's like a hundred percent about just working with yourself in your own time to release trauma from the body. But I will pop some more resources in um, the notes for the show afterwards. I know it very much have... follows a similar approach to the way that I do the breaking the trauma bond because the initial breaking of the trauma bond and getting those kinds of thoughts back under control and that are not kind of leading you or, or consuming your life because when you're in that trauma bond that initial phase it can be very difficult to even see that it could be possible for you not to wake up in the morning with this person on your mind not to go to sleep not for everything to remind and everything that we've been talking about you know the technique I use is act release divert and that is actions that are going to really kind of activate the other parts of your brain which are not the fight not the reward pathways not the um not the amygdala not the survival parts of the brain the, the parts of the brain which are to do with storytelling and, and and the things that really help us to resolve 
our emotional our emotional trauma and then the release like you said journaling and engaging in creativity and communication and you know meeting people and then the divert which is that re-bringing the focus back onto yourself back onto your purpose back into alignment with who you truly are and in doing that you can move through move through this process and get to the get to the light at the end of the tunnel which is absolutely there yeah fantastic I'd like to speak to um this one of these questions I've got um in the Q&A um uh it may have been answered but um um, Howard posted a question about, you know, kind of like, how do I sum it up in a way that's relevant to everyone? He, he's saying, you know, like, you know, the, 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 no one in the community knows how manipulative my ex was, basically. And it sounds like, um, Howard, and I'm really sorry that you're going through that. It sucks to be in a situation where you know that you're the good guy and, you know, this person manipulated and lied and has turned people against you. But I want to speak to something that answers that, but it's, it's kind of a little bit more general, which is how can we, or how can you all um, support people who become in a really, um, in a really destructive way, um, kind of in a, in, a, in a holding pattern of being upset about you know, the fact that, you know, everyone believes these things that aren't true and, you know, you're the victim and, and people see that the person who's a narcissist is just so wonderful and social and witty and charming and engaging and not you. I mean, I say, I ask that because I see it a lot in my work, not just for this situation, but for, for any kind of um, abuse and any kind of emotional crisis. It's, it's easy to get your thoughts wrapped in. This shouldn't have happened. It's not fair. I can't believe it. Um, and we can get into, I mean, you know, we can get into the space where it's hard to, to see the light. It's hard to come out of that. Can we just speak to that? I think it's really important because at some point, I mean, we, do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it very well, mm -hmm. but I think, um, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah we, we need to find a way to break the thought pattern so that we can not care anymore. And I don't mean that in a negative way, not not caring because it did happen and it's abusive and terrible and we need to accept that and validate that, but be able to go, okay, that happened and that I'm okay and I'm worthy and, and I know that. How can we start that journey? Um, yes, Trisha, a um, little order of that. And thank you yeah. for asking that, Howard. Yeah, I was, I was answering Howard too. Um, I went through that and it was brutal, but honestly, you have to um, be able to remove yourself from it. They're flying monkeys and people that are helping abuse you by proxy or third party um, without the abuser directly coming at you. It hurts, especially mm -hmm. if you shared a friendship with these people, but you know, Anybody that's going to treat you that way is not your friend. Um, so you have to just be able to, you know, speak your truth, stand strong and just let them go because it's not serving you. Um, it's not going to help your healing. And it's very important that you focus again, turn it inward, focus on your healing yourself and just keep going. Do you and find your tribe. Um, that's why I say, you know, join these support groups, um, maybe start talking to some of the people that are on this live chat. Um, I, I've made so many incredible connections with people through these platforms on social media during my healing. And I talk to them like every day. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you, you find the universe gives you what you need when you need it, if you just open your eyes. <laughs> so, you know, pour that love into you and let those people go. They're not your friends. Yeah, and, and we're here. We're giving you permission. We're giving you permission. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay to let them go and mm -hmm. to redirect and to come come home to yourself. And yeah, to um some really practical things when you're not feeling worthy, when you are not, haven't got that self-esteem, that self-belief, using affirmations, which I've nicely got behind me, are a really great way to start because they require very little energy they aren't complicated you know it is really really simple to just integrate an affirmation practice into your day and just go with it for a while and then explore just what kind of benefit it's having because I should imagine everybody on here would 
say that they've used affirmations at some point to help them through through and yeah they can feel a bit strange at first and you can wonder why on earth it works but they do work and there's yeah real real science behind it and it's worth engaging in an affirmation practice thanks guys um um to add to that i completely agree that affirmations are part of um part of the healing process for me as well even just um, the power of saying I love myself in the mirror, even when you don't believe it, is just like whew, big. It can make you cry and, and bring mm-hmm. up a lot of emotions. So, but to add to that, um, we have a tendency to project um, our feelings onto others, right? And that can be our good feelings as well. So um, if you believe that this person is seen that way in society, then you're going to be projecting that onto them when it may not necessarily be true. So the flying monkeys in their life and the people around them might actually see the, the, what's really going on, but they get something from the relationship that they don't want to give up. So say um, it's a friend and they're like, oh, well, this friend gives me something. Well, I'm not going to give up that friendship, although I can see that they're an abusive person. Um, so they're, they're basically fulfilling a need from that relationship, that, that flying monkey. But anyone who does get close enough to that person is going to eventually see their true colours. And that is what we have to hold strong to. Um, and that's what I tell my clients um, to focus on what's true in that situation. What do you know is true in that situation? Because you know that they're an abusive person. So what is true that's going to happen when another person comes along is they're going to experience the same thing because they're predictable in their behavior. Um, And there is a book called um, The Art of Not Giving an F, (laughs) U-C-K. I think it's a really good book. And it's also taught me to stop caring so much about what other people think about this person and what other people think about me cutting off this person. Because when I no longer care about what they think about it, I have a lot of freedom, emotional freedom, especially. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I have that emotional freedom, I put myself first and I focus on what I want. Um, and a really good uh, exercise to do when you're starting off on this journey is to write a, yes, it is by Mark Manson, um, is to write yourself a joy list. Uh, I tell all of my clients when we first start that when you're really, really focused on what you don't want, you forget what you love and what, you, what brings you joy. So write a list of everything that brings you joy. And that might be something down to just a cup of tea or, you know, um, changing your sheets in your bed or going for a walk or something that's on your bucket list that you really want to do. Like, oh, I really want to go bungee jumping or something. Write a list of all the things that bring you joy or that you want to bring you joy. And then when it comes to I'm in a really negative mindset, I'm going to go do something on that list. Sarah, that's great advice. Honestly, I would say exactly the same. Flying monkeys, who cares? Like, Mm -hmm. they're not worth your time. So it is, it's about, um, yeah, just managing that, isn't it? It's like, who cares? You know, they're they're not your friends. They, They don't value you. And that's what you've got to start doing is valuing yourself. And I guess this is about boundary work, isn't it? Mm. It's about boundaries. It is, and getting to know yourself and getting to love yourself. And at first, it can be difficult to believe that you are lovable, but we are all born enough. We are all born completely Mm -hmm. unique and individually us. And, you know, we can be found ourselves so out of balance with this experience that we get lost. And when we focus our attention on coming back to ourselves, that's when everything opens up. And so it can be very easy to focus on what they're doing, what people are saying. But like Sarah says, if they're getting served from it, then they can be blind to, or they can choose to not see what is obvious to everybody. And anybody that takes one person's side of an account without even giving any due care or consideration to the other side, it doesn't matter what they think about you anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if they're giving them all the attention, good. Whatever keeps them from bothering you, perfect. Yes, that's exactly right. done. (laughs) And, you know, that thing about looking at the joy list, you know, always, we always, I always start with the perfect day exercise or, you know, that perfect 
you know, that perfect moment exercise, you know, where are you, what are you doing, and really getting clear on where your life could get to if you are really, really clear on what it is that is aligned to you, that is going to bring you that joy. And our brains have a weird and wonderful way of taking us there if we let it. Yeah, yeah it's important to notice, um, you know, what you're spending your time thinking about and you know, to notice, oh, gee, I'm actually spending a lot of time thinking about what other people are thinking about me and what other, you know, and the the negative stuff that the narcissist is saying about me or doing. And at that, at those moments, catch yourself and go, okay, I notice I'm focusing on that. Now, actually, what would I really like to be the case instead? And it's like everything else, it's, it's, it's habit. And when we're in the habit of focusing on the difficult stuff, when we've been through trauma, it's impossible not to at first. But it's important as you embark on your healing journey to start to notice when you're spending more time focusing on the negative than the positive and make small steps, baby steps every day. And a great thing, which I'll just, you know, um, echo, I think what Sarah was saying or Eva saying, you know, really thinking about what, what brings you joy, what it is you want and, and, and writing out, you know, noticing, for example, if your focus is on um, what other people are saying, the friends you've lost, et cetera changing that around and, and taking the time to write out to yourself. I um, imagine, you know, how much joy I feel when I have this group of friends who totally understand me, they totally support me. And, you know, I think as, as you said, Eve, um, I forget how you said it, the why when, you know, making that really tangible and really spelling it out for yourself and noticing when you get stuck in the negative stuff, getting that piece of paper and going, right, I'm just going to remind myself of what I'm heading towards, the reality that's coming into being. Because we all have that, that opportunity to create that, that wonderful life for ourselves, right? Mm-hmm. But yeah. to do that, we really, we have to put the time in to, you know, catch ourselves when things are, and things are always going to go. There are always going to be times when we, you know, have, have bad days and bad experiences and negative thoughts, and that's okay. But getting into a habit of, learning how to shift yourself out of that is, is a really important life skill. That can mm. take everyone I think really one thing I always talk about is, um, I find myself talking about this a lot, is that we often try to solve our thought problems with thought solutions. We're always trying to think our way out of a problem. And actually solving a thought problem with a body solution enables our mind to do what it's designed to do and that is to resolve the emotional experience that we're having so a body solution is something that is practical it might get you out in nature it might be something like exercise it might be writing down it might be talking but it isn't trying to resolve it inside your own head it's taking some sort of action and it activates the different parts of your brain and that's what gives our body the chance to heal you know we wouldn't we don't sit and wonder whether a scab's going to form when we cut ourselves. And we shouldn't sit and wonder whether our mind can and, and our emotions can heal what they've been through when, we, when we've been through it. The more time we sit wondering, the more we're kind of delaying the process. So embracing it, sitting with your emotion, doing other things, they are what can really allow the body to, to do what it's designed to do. Yeah, fantastic. I'd really like to I really like to go back through um, the panelists and, and, and have you each share um, what, what you offer in your work to support people. I know we've mentioned a lot of different um, Zoom support groups, but we've had quite a few messages in the chat, like how do I find these groups? What can I do? So I'd love to just, um, I'd love for you to share yeah, what you do. And we'll start with Trisha. I know you've written a book. I don't know what else you've got going on. Please. Uh, yeah, I wear many hats. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, uh, I coach, um, anybody who just needs help getting started, uh, whether you're still in the relationship, you just got out of the relationship. Um, I am, I am tough love. I am all about getting you in love with yourself again and setting up those boundaries. Um, but I think it's completely necessary and, it's what's going to help you take your power back and stand firm um, and stop accepting. And what is, your book, what is your book called? What is your book called and how can we find it? My book is called Narcissist Misaligned Mind. It is on Amazon. Um, it's how my faith and rebirth helped me escape the abuse. Um, it's in paperback and it's also on a Kindle. 
uh, for you device readers. I like to hold a book, but um, yep, it's <laughs> available cool. all across all of Amazon in the UK, Australia, and um, USA and Canada. So, um, but yeah, you can you can find me on um, Instagram and Facebook. My Instagram handle is at narc miss the line mine just send me a dm if you need some time to chat and um i'm happy to help and support you and encourage any way i can so um yeah i offer one-to-one -one mentoring and coaching as well i also have a program which is specifically for breaking the trauma bond and reclaiming your identity it's a, a hybrid of a group and a one-to-one -one program so it's weekly one-to-one -one sessions over 12 weeks but it's also a weekly workshop which is hosted by me and then I have a range of guests healers and specialists that come in and we do some collective healing we learn new things and it is very much about coming back to your authentic self you know we try out and we do pretty much well a whole range of different things from clearing the energy of your home to quantum healing to getting involved with um, different yoga practices soul recoding sound and color therapy and basically you'll find something in there that works for you and that you will then want to run with and will be able to integrate into your kind of everyday practice and yeah it's very much working with the subconscious mind to break that trauma bond and then it's all about getting back in touch with who you are and where you want to take your life because I think one of the things that we were just talking about with regards to you know how you can take from this well there's a saying that I absolutely love and that is in grief there is much wisdom and if we go through the process at the end of it we get to take away some really really profound things that we can apply to all areas of our life and I think we're probably all set there on that journey and finding out those things all the time and it's really reassuring to know that what we've been through wasn't completely in vain. It was bad, it was shit, and somebody came in and really, really did us, did us a real cruelty. But if we can grow and we can we can support others, then we can we can turn that negative into a positive. Fantastic. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, so I am a NLP coach and timeline therapy practitioner. I'm studying psychology at the moment, uh, but I have been practicing NLP for a fair few years and now I have a coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching program. Uh, it takes six months to go through. I also do one-on-one -on -one timeline therapy sessions, but my main uh, program is my six-month coaching program. Um, in that process, we go through um, a journey on figuring out who you are, figure out what you want and how you can create that in your life. And then once we do that, we kind of, you know, sweep that to the side to be worked on in the period. But then we work on um, removing blockages, uh, unconscious blockages and uh, working through triggers and working through um, issues that may have been um, causing a lot of strife emotionally for, for a long time or working on removing limiting decisions or limiting, you know, um, feelings that have been stopping you from getting what you want in your life now I do help people with narcissism but I focus more on your personal life so um, although there may be issues that you want to talk about um, the focus is primarily on you uh, although we do work on those issues as they come up I think the most important thing is to focus on what you want um, rather than what this person has taken away from you although we do address it at the time um, the focus is on what you want because you've been taking so much of your energy and so much of your time and putting it into anyone else, especially uh, if you're a people pleaser. I work with people pleasers a lot because we have lost a lot of energy, a lot of time in, in putting our energy into others. So it's now time to focus on self. So there's a lot of self-love uh, in there, a lot of self-love practice and a lot of activities that are to do with um, the emotional work and the mental work as well. So um, I'm offering a, um, a discount for anyone who wants to jump on um, and do a session with me. And if anyone signs up, there's a discount for that. Oh, thank you, Sarah.
Um, so I guess so. I'm so I guess it's me. Um, so I'm a psychologist and I work therapeutically um, using different modalities. I work one to one as well. Um, I use a lot of neuropsychology, um, helping you to grow, to regenerate, to connect back to yourself and grow that way. Um, I also make a lot of um, YouTube videos to help educate people and help them to move forward. So yeah, go, go, go and check me out. I'm uh, at askanushka.co.uk and um, yeah, have a look, see maybe there's something that might um, help you to move forward. I also uh, do meditations. I'm going to be starting a podcast very soon. So yeah, I do a whole variety of things. Cool. And I would encourage everyone to reach out and to, um, you know, be in touch with these panelists individually if you have questions and also to um, uh, Narcobies TV, uh, who um, has been moderating this, uh, if you have questions that haven't been answered because we can put you in touch with other people if we need to. Um, we do have a lot of extra questions, but um, this is only part one of a three part conversation. And, um, I would love to hear from uh, I would love to hear from all of you who are watching and all of you who are watching the replay. I would love for you to write in and talk about um, what you would like to hear about next, because maybe um, yeah, I would, yeah, we we do have extra questions, but I would love to know if there's anything that we've left out that you particularly want help with. Um, Paxton, what are your thoughts? You just appeared suddenly, our moderator and producer. We can't hear you. I can't. You're muted. You're muted. Oh, here we go. No. We can't hear you, Paxton. Here we go. Here we go. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here you are. I'm, I'm talking in the room and I'm talking to you now for sure and not the rest of the room. Oh, um, I'm just I just brought down the value of the whole screen here because uh, all five of you are exceptionally beautiful people who have uh, I'm watching this interaction and it's been amazing. Um, I, I want to say this. We have more questions than we have time today. Yeah. But um, we don't have more questions than we have passion to help people because all five of you have that. But like anything else in life, it needs to be regulated. So, so we can't be here all day, though, um, if we had the power and that much dynamic energy, uh, that comes from the sun in the universe, we would probably do that. So we're going to need to call this uh, to an end. Um, but uh, there was uh, 18, 19 other people that were here. A couple of them are, are leaving now because they're recognizing we're coming to an end. This is us putting our toe into the water uh, to see what we, what we get from it. Um, we have, uh, we've done quite well. We have we have done well done to all five of you. Well, let me let me rephrase that. Let's do this. There we go. Not that you can hear it. Um, Michelle, you you did really well for spur of the moment being the host. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I can't believe, aren't you supposed to be doing what you do on your show? No, <laughs> it's your idea. I just try to make it happen. Um, I am honored to be able to do this with all five of you. Um, two UK individuals, uh, two beautiful UK people here, uh, Anashka and Eve, and two from Australia, uh, which would be, of course, Michelle, our host, and Sarah, the fighter. But who keeps us in line? The North Carolina NCs in the house, uh, <laughs> just keeping us in line <laughs> so that everybody uh, gets that little down home cooking and, and and would you say, come to Jesus, Lord, and tell it like it is? <laughs> I love it. And you were on your best behavior today. You you didn't really like start any fights or anything today. <laughs> I was concerned when I was putting the panel together. I was like, Sarah and Trisha on the same panel. Who can I counterbalance that with? And I said, Eve and Anashka is going to be the person that's going to sit back and go like, okay, everybody. We're going to relax now and understand that we're going to, this is what we're going to do. And this is the plan. And then I said, but who could actually be the one would be the mother hen of everyone? And that would be Michelle. 
he know. keeps me in line. Okay, let's just. Let's just, let's just, let's just I, I literally thought to myself, who could keep me in line? I went like, oh, Michelle could. <laughs> Michelle could keep me in line. And so everybody has done well, but I truly appreciate uh, the work that's been done of talking to people in the chat. And the chat just has exploded. Can everybody see the chat? It went from yeah. zero to like 15 and like yeah, yeah. It exploded. And oh, my, one of my daughters is here. She's laughing too. We, we both are, everybody here is watching this. And it's like, what you have done is created an atmosphere of safety, uh, of, uh, of productivity, but you've made it possible for people to understand their emotions and what they're going through with dealing with someone who doesn't care for them. And you've given them an opportunity to see their dignity and to go out and reach it and grab it and take it back. Some of the things that you said, Sarah, Trisha, and Eve were amazing and how you as a cleanup batter, Anashka did, brought it all back home for us to move forward to the next question and that you mm -hmm. delivered quite well, Michelle. An amazing team came together. First time all of you being on camera together. That was good fun. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Truly, I mean, really amazing. We were sitting here watching this and it was going like, you you ladies should do this regularly all the time. So feel free uh, to interact <laughs> and do projects together. Uh, but please, everyone that's here watching this and those uh, that will watch this back later, uh, please come back for... Uh, an open session number two and number three mm. of doing this. And uh, mm. again, we just stuck a toe in. Next time we're going to put more of our, uh, we're going to put one foot in, then we're going to put another foot in and you got something to, to expect. <laughs> you guys can't see my daughter. One of my youngest is back here going, she's doing, she's doing like jazz hands. So you guys are going to be <laughs> awesome as we go on. And uh, no, you can't get them on camera because. Turn um, the camera around, <laughs> Paxton. Yeah, turn it around. Yeah, I want to see your Listen, totally no, they're face. shaking it. Hey, your producers. Yeah. <laughs> they're not. They're, what'd you say? Did you hear? Say it again. I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> they're in my pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> I'm going to be in about 10 minutes. Hey, hey, I just got threatened by the <laughs> yeah, other Yeah, me too. I, the well, I will let you off. I'm get you. They just told me I'm going to get you. I'm in trouble. You may not see me after today because I just out of the room <laughs> this whole thing. But I had to. This is, listen. They're the behind the scenes. That's why if you see Marie e EP on there, yeah. that's executive producer. That's why she put that yeah. on there. It's like to remind everybody I'm here. I'm, she's running. She was running. She got it all set up. And we we are honored to do this. But there are more questions, everyone that's listening yeah. and watching this right now. You have no idea the questions. Yeah. Uh, I haven't even told Michelle the questions that I got. So yeah. Um, and then each one of you may have things from your own particular uh, pages or channels or the, uh, whatever it may be, many of you may or may not know about Ask Anashka. Uh, it's a running series that is very powerful and a number of other things. Uh, she's been making videos for quite a while, which is why I wanted you on the platform, uh, Anashka. You're very good at what you do, but you, you all, all of you ladies, I mean, you I really, you can't see it. My daughters are shaking their heads. We really were saying, okay, we're going to throw this together and see what happens. And well, they're doing, <laughs> how you do that? They're doing the whole heart thing. Whatever, I'm old, I can't do it. So the, yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. you're doing, Trisha, that's what she's doing over there behind us yeah. over here. Um, this worked so well, but um, everybody else uh, that will watch this back, all of you are going to get copies of this. Yes, I'm still recording. Yeah. And uh, we're all doing, they're giving me cues of something I got to mention before we go. But um, mm -hmm. we're, we're, um, we're going to do some things over the next two, all of us, all six of us, everyone that's watching this, we're going to get together and we're going to be really, really, really ready for you. We just put this on and just throw it out to you this time. But there's some things that we're all going to talk about and uh, we're going to go with number two next time and it's going to be good. And number three is going to be even better. And for me personally, hey, I'll keep doing this with all of you. It's not a problem, but we need to get to the questions as many as we can, as we did today, even more so next time. Uh, this yeah. has been amazing from my perspective with all of you coming together and never really meeting each other on camera until this moment today. And so everyone, if you have questions, please send them to us. Uh, please connect with us. Uh, next time we will continue to chat with you in the chat. And yeah. uh, we will take note of your Q&A, the questions that you may have. Uh, everyone has talked about their programs. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Stay in tune with the postings that will take place. Listen. Yep. Yeah. Last comments from everyone, and then we got to go. Michelle, please go first. 
I know you've all talked and mentioned things before I came on. Just anything you can shrink wrap and say to everybody and how they can reach out to you. Yeah, I mean, please reach out to me if you want to have any, you know, if you have any questions about um, releasing trauma from the body, getting in touch with your, your, you know, your emotions, or if you just have any questions in general. I'm at Michelle Dixon Healing, and thank you so much for coming. I'm just really grateful that that we pulled it off. I never thought when I had this idea that that, that it would be this. I thought maybe it'd be like one person from my little audience. So this is amazing, and I'm I'm just really grateful everyone showed up and. And you're here and let people you know um let people you know reach out to them if they've got questions because um, we're really all in this to give everyone support so yeah you did good you did you did really really well as a as a host of the show on, on uh, oh, thanks. notice you did really you did really <laughs> well i deliberately did that like i don't think i'm gonna be here i'm leaving so yeah um and Trisha, it was, you a, exactly it was a little what, unexpected, but you know, that's all right. I, I know, but you know what? You manage all those uh, homeschooling kids you got over there and a husband and all the other stuff you got going on. So, hey, if you can give birth to children, you can handle this piece of cake. You did well. You did really well. Uh, Trisha, I saw you doing it. I was in my mind, I was going to say, Trisha, get have the book. And you were, oh, yeah. I was smiling as, as Michelle was talking. Yay. Like, Please have your book. Hold it up for a few seconds so everybody can take a screenshot and take a look at it. And uh, cool. there we go. That's the book and your words, please, for everybody that's still here, because uh, look, most of the people are still here. So go ahead. Awesome. Yeah. Um, this is my book it's on Amazon. Um, actually, Barnes Noble's picking it up, too. I forgot to mention that um, in the next few weeks. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, I got uh, to do, do that, too. Hold on a second. <laughs> um, uh, you can reach me. I put my contact information in the chat. You can reach me on Instagram at Narcness Align Mind if you want to uh, schedule a coaching session or if you just need to cry it out. I'm here to listen and validate you. Um, and you can also email me at selfloverecovery910 at gmail.com. Sending you all love and light and stay well. Yeah. And by the way, she really does mean that if you want to cry it out. That's another reason why I wanted you on the show because I knew you would. That's you really mean that, by the way. She's not just saying that, everybody. If you want to go cry, <laughs> connect with her. Um, and by all means, uh, Eve. Yeah, so yeah, you can connect with me. I put my details in the chat box as well. Just keep on going. There is absolutely light at the end of this. We are here for you. You are loved, you are supported, and you are enough. And we are here to help you to to realize that and to hold that truth because you deserve to heal from this and there's a community of people waiting to to support and love you and and help you to open do that. arms yeah absolutely we yeah, are open arms. ready for you and by the way if you are at home on a friday saturday and sunday and you want to connect with somebody especially on i think you do friday and sunday or I do Friday and Sunday Zoom groups. Yeah, Friday and Sunday and Wednesday Zoom groups. Um, yeah, so yeah. if the have been picked up and uh, you're sitting there and you're upset because the narc is, uh, well, is a troublemaker and he's got the kids, uh, reach out to uh, Eve and uh, she has an entire group of people who are uh, hanging out with each other until the kids come back home so you don't feel alone because yeah. your friends are out being stupid and you're trying to stay home safe. Got it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? All right, connect with Eve. Sarah? What can I say about you, man? You just, you're just like, you're Popeye. You're the Popeye of narcissism. He's like, seriously, <laughs> like a can of, of, of whoop stuff. And you just be ready to fight people. <laughs> I had you on and my audience blew up. They were like, what is that girl taking? What is she on drugs? She's like pumped up. She's like ready to fight a narc, right? <laughs> so, go ahead. The queen of Twitter, go ahead. <laughs> it's because my arms, I move my arms so much. <laughs> I'm <a> European. <laughs> Yeah. I'm like always just like <laughs> um thanks everyone for joining um I'm Sarah De Silva my page on Instagram is heal the mum wound m-u-m wound uh and in, uh, Twitter is the same um there are a lot of there are a few free resources on my Instagram page there's the trigger digger journal which I highly recommend for anyone starting out their journey um and some meditations um but otherwise um you know, if you're starting out, I think anyone who cannot get help right now, like um, therapy or otherwise, grab yourself a book that you're willing to throw away and just write, write, write as much as you can just to get it out because that's the easiest way to stop having these things running around in your head 
and get some peace. And otherwise, know that we are all here for you and you can send us a DM at any time. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All of you ladies are amazing. Uh, the, uh, the, the one woman who is on YouTube and decides to tell people to ask her anything, Anashka, you don't know what you were starting because people just be sending all kinds of questions to you and you sit there <laughs> and basically answer all their questions. And I sit there and go like, how do you do that? That would like drive me crazy, but you do it. You put yourself out there and you have your Ask Anashka uh, YouTube channel. Uh, thank you for doing this. I truly appreciate it, uh, future podcast person. <laughs> You're very welcome, very welcome. Absolutely, everybody. Um, well, it's just a it's a source of information. It's just another perspective, you know, from someone um, who has worked with these people, um, you know, someone who, from a psychological perspective. It's just a different way of um, looking at it. And also, if you are someone who has gone through narcissistic abuse and you're kind of like at the other side, this is the kind of work that I do. It's all about self-regeneration. It's all about connection back to self because trauma, you know, separates us from who we actually are. So it's just finding your way back home to who you are. And I'm kind of, I, I work with people kind of like, to, you know, at the, at the other side of their journey, whereas you lovely ladies work with people at the beginning, not necessarily just the beginning, but people who are working through it. But I kind of work with people more about, you know, taking them to the other side. And there is another side. And there is there is a side of, you know, recovery, um, empowerment, and learning about yourself, connecting back to yourself, regenerating. Yeah. Establishing a balance uh, is what I wanted across the, the panel in itself. And if anybody, when you watch this back, all, all of you will get copies of this, three different copies and audio the gallery view and also um, the speaker view, you will notice that there you have provided from beginning to end and you also go one step further, all of you. You also have on your panel, Michelle, who talks about the body and ways to, to work that connection as well. So I appreciate all of you and thank you for taking of your time. It is, it is nighttime in the UK. It is uh, morning time for you in Australia. And, uh, well, you know, you're on the East Coast, uh, Trisha, and I'm on the West Coast. We've made an amazing connection here, all of us. The only person mi thing missing, I think, right now is Canada. So we, we have made an amazing connection, all of us together. Uh, I'm trying to give everyone an opportunity to get their last bit of chat in <laughs> because <laughs> I'm going to unplug. Uh, and I don't want anybody to feel like we're kicking them to the curve, curb. Uh, but hopefully everyone's gotten uh, the answers that they needed. I'm just double checking there before I disconnect because uh, we are going to have to say goodbye to you. And I don't want you to think we're closing shop down. If you still had some thank yous or some love to send and everyone here on the panel is sending you love, but uh, uh, we're looking at three o'clock here in California, which means that it is 11 o'clock in the UK, correct? Yeah. 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 It's coming up 11. You go to bed. Um, that. You're going to get copies yeah, of this you can edit it yeah. as you see fit. I'm sorry, you said Michelle before we go. <laughs> I said it sounds like it's time for bed for our, our UK. Um, yeah, it is. It is because people, uh, yeah. I, for the I, UK, I, is, it is time I, for bed. I, I was really <laughs> going to send something to shock uh, Anashka over there so we wouldn't put her to sleep because I know she likes to be in her pajamas this time of night from our last meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I'm not, I to throw I'm, no, no, no. I haven't actually got pajamas on, I have slippers. No, you, oh, my slippers are here. Oh, I definitely got oh, slippers. Okay, but I've yeah. not got pajamas on underneath. It's a dress. <laughs> okay, all right. I've not I got thought pajamas you were gonna, on. I thought you were do something else. I'm like, no, please stop. It's a family show. Don't jump. You scared me. Literally. No pajamas and under the dress. You scared me for a brief moment. I was going like, please don't do that. Please don't do that. <laughs> you can't you do. My executive producers are going to fire me. They're, she, my daughter is picking up. Yeah, wait, I'm hey, a you stop that, Michelle. I, yeah, Michelle, don't keep that sweater on. All right. Well, we were all scared when Trisha took off and took off her jacket. I thought it was going to be a fight for a second. I didn't know. We didn't know. It was like, what do you like, think of us? Like, seriously? Listen, I think a lot of things when I don't know what's about to happen. So, so anyhow, thank you so much. We've all had fun. Everyone here, thank please you, everyone. Do Michelle says, tell a friend, get the questions over to Michelle, uh, get them over, of course, to anybody here, but mainly Michelle and Narc Abuse TV. 
uh, and then we will pass them on to the panel and uh, they will prep ahead of time and we'll be ready for you for round two of healing from narcissism.